bless you, wonderful viewers of our program, Voice of Prophecy. My name is Prophet Austin Moses, and by the grace of God, I am the founder and senior pastor of a ministry known as Divine Ministries International Solution Center, where champions are being raised and destinies are being restored. I'm also the founder of Prophet Austin Moses Ministries, Voice of Prophecy, and that is a network of prophets in different parts of the world. I give thanks and praises to God Almighty for all that He has been doing for us and for all that He shall continue to do for us in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I would also like to thank our partners as well all over the world. We thank you for your support, for your love, for your contribution. And I pray that the good Lord will continue to meet you at all the points of your needs in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank you also, Avias, for allowing us to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into your home this very moment. I would like you to do us a favor. Pick up your phone. Call your family members, call your friends, call your neighbors, tell them to tune in to this TV station, tell them that the Holy Spirit is moving on the airwaves, and I pray that that Spirit of God that is moving on the airwaves right now will touch you in a very special way in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of this program, you have a reason to glorify the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. I am here today to release a prophetic anointing upon your life that will take you to the next level in your life in Jesus' name. And I brought good tidings for you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've got a good news for you. I've got a message for you from God. And that message will give you hope. It will restore you back into the, your faith in the Lord. And that, me that message as well will take you to the next level in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go uh, to the Bible. Uh, the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 5. The Gospel of St. Luke chapter 5. I will take you reading from verse 17 and stop at 25. Luke chapter 5, 17 to 25. I take it from here. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, Men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up upon the roof, the house top, and let him down through the tiling with his coat into the midst before Jesus. Verse 20. And when he saw their feet, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Verse 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this? We speak it blasphemous. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 22. But when Jesus perceived their thought, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your heart? Whether it's easy to say, Thy sin be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that, they, but, 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 but that ye may know 
that the Son of Man had power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I said unto thee, Arise and take thy cot, and go into thy house. 25. And immediately he rose up before them and took up what we are on, and took up that we are on he laid, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. May the Lord bless his holy word in the name of Jesus Christ. I touch my message of today. Break down the barrier. Break down the barrier. You know, people will start praying, and when it gets to the time for them to have their breakthrough, the enemy will build a barrier on their way in order to hinder them from receiving their breakthrough, in order to prevent them from receiving their breakthrough. This man from the Bible passage we just read now, he was paralyzed. But thank God for good friends, thank God for good family members, thank God for good neighbors. They brought him on the bed. They wanted to present him before Jesus Christ for him to heal him through the door. But because of the multitude, because of the crowd, they had to climb on top of the roof with the sick man on the bed. They tore down the roof and they brought the man down in front of Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Jesus Christ knew when they were trying to bring the man before him through the door. He was watching. Listen, he didn't tell the people, the multitude to clear up the road in order for that paralyzed man to be brought to him. He was watching to see how much faith do they have, how far they can press further. How hard they can press further to receive the miracle that they so much desire for this man. Now, they went on top of the roof. Listen, I want you to imagine this. You are in a house. People went on top of the roof of the house, tearing off the roof apart. And I know that the people inside the house, and even the owner of the house, will scream and shout at them, saying, Stop! What you're doing, stop! You are tearing my house apart. You are tearing my roof apart. But they refuse to stop. You know why? Because they have the faith and determination. The people, the, the, the multitude at the entrance, they were barrier number one. The roof was barrier number two. They gave way for barrier number one, but they refused to give way for barrier number two, which was the roof. Because they know, they believe that if only they can be able, they are able, they can be able to present that man before Jesus Christ. The man will surely receive your healing, his healing rather. Like you, viewers of this program, maybe you have been praying to God concerning a particular thing. Maybe you have been knocking on that door for a very long time with your prayer. And to you, it's as if the door is not being opened. I encourage you today, keep on knocking on that door. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, will definitely show up one day, someday, somehow, and then He will give you the result of what you have been asking Him for. Do not give up hope. Because those that give up hope in life, they never get to the destination where God wants them to be. Those who give up hope in life, they never achieve something better in life. Those who give up hope, they never fulfill their destiny. So I encourage you today, do not give up hope in life. Maybe you are at the point of saying, you know what? I've tried everything possible. It's not working, so I give up. I resign to faith. No, do not resign to faith. You know why? Because the future is bright for you. But if only you can just say, you know what? Summon courage and break down the barrier. It could be a barrier of discouragement. It could be a barrier of you hearing people speaking negative things about you, saying negative words concerning you, about you. Maybe they are saying things they don't even know about you. So because of that, you decided to first go, to let go of 
the good things that you so much desire in life, the good things that you pursue in life. Those are your barriers, the things people are saying. Refuse to give up to what they are saying. Refuse to allow what they are saying to be a barrier that will prevent you from moving to where you're supposed to move to. Let me share you this with you. Maybe you're just watching my program for the very first time and you don't know much about me. When I was at the age of 20, my father kicked me out of the house under the street. You know why? Because I wasn't doing well in school. So he thought the best thing for him to do is to kick me out of the house. At the point in time, I became a beggar on the street. At a point in time, I became a shoe shiner on the street. At a point in time, I became a laborer in construction site. At a point, I became a bus conductor. But during those times that I was going through all those difficult moments of my life as a youth, I refused to give up. They were all like a barrier in my life. But because I knew what God had planted inside of me and what God had called me to become in life, I refused to allow the barrier to break me down. People call me all sorts of names. They call me useless. They, they call me all sorts of names. But I did not allow those names to determine my future for me. Because those names, they were barriers then. I did not allow those names to detect my future. I did not allow those names to, 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 to tell me what my future is. No. I refused because they were barriers. I yielded to the voice of God. I yielded to what God told me. And today, here yeah, I am. In that same way, I tell you today, do not give up hope. Refuse to allow your barrier to stop you from pressing further. If you refuse to allow the barrier to pull you down, to hinder you, believe me, you will definitely achieve what God has promised you that you are achieving life. You will definitely get to that high level that the Lord have told you that you will get to. You will definitely begin to live the dream that God has told you that you will live in your life. Break down that barriers. Break down that barriers. That project that you have abandoned, I encourage you today, revisit it, go back to it after this program because today the Lord will release the anointing of completion on any abandoned project of yours in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you started a project at the point in time things became tough and then you could no longer continue with the project. You abandoned the project. I prophesy over your life today the anointing of completion. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Believe me, this year will be one of the best years so ever in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will do great and mighty things in your life. He will surprise you in this year in the name of Jesus Christ. He will wipe your tears away in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you are watching me and someone, somewhere, somehow is talking you down. I tell you today, those that are talking you down today, before the end of this year, they shall begin to talk you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are looking down on you now, before the end of this year, they shall look up to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Maybe your own barrier is intimidation. Where you are at the moment, people are intimidating you. I've got good news for you. The reason why they are intimidating you is because they know that you carry something that is useful. You carry something that is uh, 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 something that is great. Something that the word means is what you are carrying. So because of that, they are envious of you and then they are trying to intimidate you to, to frustrate you out of the, 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 the line that you are in. It's up to you to determine to say, you know what? Those things are barriers. I will never allow them to hold me back. Break down those barriers. This man, there were barriers on his way. Those barriers really were meant to hinder him from receiving his healing. But those barriers was when they were broken down and at the end, he got his healing. Like I said earlier on, thank God for good family members. Thank God for good friends. Thank God for good neighbors. 
because the Bible says some men brought that they brought that sick man. There are people around you who are in a position to help you, but they are not. They don't want to help you. Cry on God. Psalm one two one said, "I lift up my eyes unto the Him from where cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Put your hope and trust in the Lord. Believe me, sincerely. Listen to this. It is always better." For you to allow God to choose a helper for you rather than for you to choose a helper by yourself because a helper you choose by yourself might disappoint you a helper you choose by yourself cannot take you far but the helper that God himself chose for you will be compelled will have no other choice than to see you to the end in other words to help you to the end I've learned that lesson in my life many years back so since then, I'll be praying unto God that God himself should be the one who will raise the helpers, who will send the helper to me. And when God raise helper and send them your way, it will be much more easier for you than for you to try to help, raise helper yourself. So therefore, I tell you today, rejoice in the Lord. It is not over for you yet because God is with you. Listen, when God was creating you, the evil ones, they were not there. So they cannot determine your future. It's only God who can determine your future. So hold on to that God. He will never let you down. He will never forsake you. He will continue to be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go to the book, Gospel according to St. Mark. The Gospel according to St. Mark. Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 52. Mark chapter 5, no, Mark chapter 10, 46 to 52. I take it from here. It says, And when they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Thebius, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry aloud and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee, verse 50, and he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus, and Jesus answered him and said to him, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight, and Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith hath made whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. That was a man born blind, blind Bartimaeus. He was sitting on the highway begging for and begging people, begging money from people. But he heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was passing by. The Bible says he cried aloud and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now listen to this. Bartimaeus was blind physically, but spiritually he wasn't blind. He was at a lot spiritually. That's why he knew that Jesus Christ was passing by. And he knew fully well that if he could draw the attention of Jesus Christ, that the story of his life would change completely. But well, listen, as he began to cry, the people around him, they told him, keep your mouth shut. Shut up, you are disturbing us. Keep your mouth shut. We are able bodied people, we are here to see him. Even if Jesus Christ wants to see people, someone, he can be people like us, not you, a common blind man. You see, God does not say things the way we human beings see it. But the Bible says he cried the more. They tried to shut him down, but he cried the more. In other words, they were trying to create barriers on his way of healing. Hey, but this man was very smart because spiritually he was at a lot. So he refused to allow them to even create barriers on his way. The more they tried to shut him down, the more he cried aloud. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
I tell you today, do not be quiet. Do not allow any situation or circumstances to make you quiet. No way. Do not allow any man to make you dip your head inside the box or inside the sand. No, 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 no. Lift your head higher and taller even ab above your peers wherever you go. Because God is with you and no one can hold you down in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Those that are laughing at you today, before the end of this year, by the grace of God, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, those same people will come and laugh with you because there's a difference between laughing at you and laughing with you. They laugh at you now, but tomorrow they will definitely laugh with you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will have a reason to invite them to come and marry with you, to come and celebrate with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said earlier on, those that are talking you down now, they will end up talking you up in Jesus' mighty name because that was what happened to blind Bartimaeus. When Jesus Christ called upon him, it was those same people who were telling him, keep your mouth shut, shut up. They were to say, oh, cheer up. He's calling you. The Bible says when Jesus Christ heard him cry, Jesus, son of David, Jesus Christ stood still. You know what? Because he refused to allow them to be barrier on his way, Jesus Christ paid him attention. That's what happened. When you keep on pressing and pressing and pressing, and pressing and pressing, intimidation is coming, you refuse. Challenge is coming, you refuse to give up hope. You keep on pressing. People are speaking negative words concerning you. Aye, you refuse to give up hope, you keep on pressing. They are pushing you here and there. You pretend as if you don't even know what they are saying. You don't hear what they are saying. You don't even see them. You just press it. You are just keep on focusing, keep on focusing, keep on focusing, keep on knocking, pushing further, pushing further, pushing harder. Believe me, Jesus Christ will pay attention to you. You will definitely listen when you when you are constant in your prayers. Jesus Christ will definitely pay your attention. Your prayer will draw Jesus Christ's attention. And when your prayer draws the attention of Jesus Christ, listen, the story of your life will definitely change. Like, like Bartimaeus, the Bible says, when they told him that Jesus Christ was calling him, what did he do? He threw off his garment, the garment of shame, the garment of a beggar, the old garment, the garment of ridicule, the garment of molestation. The man threw it away. I prophesy over your life today that every garment of shame, every garment of ridicule, every garment of cry, of weeping, that the enemy have war on you, every garment of disgrace, that the enemy have war on you, let the power of God take it off today in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way that Jesus Christ gave the life of the blind man a new meaning, a man who was begging, his sight were restored, he no longer became a beggar. Then he could do things by his own. He could use his hands to walk. He could make money by himself with his hands. Whatever that has caused limitation in your life, let it be broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that my Lord will put a new song of joy in your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have been asking this question. That people around me have been given testimony. When am I going to give my own testimony? When is it going to be my own time to give testimony? When is it going to be my own turn to give testimony? I'll be following people. I'll be, I'll be going to people's and uh, maybe be Christian. When is it going to be my own turn? When am I going to have my own child? I prophesy over your womb. I prophesy unto your womb today. Oh, you womb, hear the voice of the prophet of God. By this same time next year, you womb shall produce a child in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have been attending other people's wedding, marriage ceremony. Each time they invite you, they send invitation to you, invitation card, you receive it, enjoy when you're there. When you get back to your house, you start crying and lamenting, asking God, when am I going to get married? When am I going to meet with my own bone of bone and flesh of flesh? I prophesy over your life today that in this year, I say in this year, that wedding bed will ring in your home in the name of Jesus Christ. You so we have reason to invite people to come and celebrate with you. It is not over with you yet. Refuse to give up. Break down that barrier. Maybe you have stopped praying. You used to pray three times a day before. Maybe you used to pray one hour, two hours. Because you believe that you have been praying, nothing is happening. You have now resorted to say, you know what? I stopped praying. Listen to this. When you stop praying, you allow the barrier to overtake you. Refuse to allow the barrier to overtake you. 
Start again. Go back to your first love with Christ. Begin your prayer life again. Buckle your, up yourself together again. Take yourself back to your old prayer life. You will begin to see things working out for good for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Refuse to allow the barriers to put you down. No way. Because it is your season to shine. It is your season to shine. It is your time to glorify God. It is your time to give the best testimony ever in your family. The good news that has never happened before in your family. It is time for it to happen in your life, in your home. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the special grace of God, I am the very first author in my entire family. Remember, my father kicked me out of the house when I was 20 years old because I wasn't doing well in school. But today, I happen to be the first author in my family. I happen to be the one who have traveled extensively in my, in my entire family. My mother's side, my father's side. I am the only one who have traveled extensively more than any other ones of them. Any other, any, any, any other one of them. You know why? Because I refuse to allow the barrier that the enemy tried to put on my way to determine my future. That is what happened. When you refuse to give up, you will shine. You will definitely glorify God in the name of Jesus Christ. It is well with you and it shall continue to be well with you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, break down the barrier. Refuse to give up hope. Do not allow what poor are saying concerning you in a negative way to determine your future because your future is bright your future is great your future is big your future is mighty and it is in the hands of god it's not in what people are saying people are saying negative things about you because they do not know your future and because you know where God is taking you to, refuse to allow what they are saying to stand on your way. Hold on to the word of God. Because forever his words are settled in heaven. His words are yea and amen. And no one can change the word of God. Heaven and let me pass away. But the word of God shall not go without fulfilling the purpose. Every spoken word of God concerning your life, they shall not fall to the ground. They shall fulfill the purpose in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Before I go, I would like to give you the opportunity in case you are watching for the first time or you have not given your life to Christ and you want to become a Christian, just say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you today. I commit my life into your hands. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my family. I invite you into my business. I hand over everything to you. Come and take control. Come and take in charge. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you from all my sins. Purify and consecrate me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. As I pray that prayer, you have become a new creature entirely in the name of Jesus Christ. Every negative power hold, 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 that I've been claiming hold upon your life today. They have let you be in the name of Jesus Christ. Until I come your way again next time. My name once again is Prophet Austin Moses. I am the founder and senior pastor of Divine Ministries International Solutions Center. I'm also the founder of Prophet Austin Moses Ministry. And we are based in North of London, United Kingdom. And from where here, I launch this into the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Before I go, let me say this again. Remember. It is not over until God says it's over. It is your time to shine, your season to shine. A new dawn for you and your entire household in Jesus' mighty name. So I see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye. Hello. I would like to introduce to you the secret that will help you to unlock your destiny. As a prophet of God and in my 25 years in ministry, I've seen many people who are not able to fulfill their destiny. And I've also seen many people who are not able to locate their destiny. And as a result, they find the fulfillment. 
Do you have a destiny? What is your destiny? What is the purpose of God for your life? Why are you on this earth? But we thank God today that I still hope for you. In this book, you will discover the reason why you must not give up hope in life. And you will also discover the essence of you working in your destiny after you have discovered your destiny and your purpose. Because until you discover your destiny and live your destiny, you will never find fulfillment. This book that I still hope for you was inspired by the touch of the Holy Spirit. To order a copy of this book, please call the details on the screen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.